Thank you, Dr. Mike. It has been a, a pleasure to hear the vision that the Lord gave to you as something that is very exciting that shows that God is speaking to his people. Amen. And uh, by the time I heard it, I just called you by. I said, brother, this is it. This is from the Lord. Amen. I remember like four or maybe four years ago, I came here for the first time with my friend Ricky, Ricky Leonard. And something, a real God spoke to me something that day. Um, I didn't really know all the details, but I felt like this was some place where God is going to move and touch many people again. Because he has done that before. Again. And then three years after, oh no, uh, three years ago, I came back. You invited me with my wife. I came to preach here. And uh, that day when I finished preaching, uh, on my way back with my wife, I told my wife, I don't know, but I feel like I have to ask uh, Brother Mike if I can have the time to come and uh, do some recording of a message from here to, to reach the world. For those of you who don't know me, but God has given us the privilege and the grace to have a, a international ministry from back uh, in, uh, in the Congo, where we are from. That is the heart of Africa. We have a church, uh, we have a ministry that have churches and Bible schools and different develop, uh, community development projects. So those works are really spreading fast and growing, going in many nations of the world. Uh, actually, I'm just coming back a month ago from Belgium, where I went to ordain one of my pastors. We have churches in, in Belgium, in Germany, and uh, our graduate of the Bible school that we have, in the last uh, years, we have trained more than 1,500 pastors who are planting churches all over. And many are in, in, in England, in, in UK, in, in France, in, of course, many nations of Africa. And our own churches are established in, in, in Angola, in uh, Congo Brazzaville, uh, uh, Gabon, Cameroon, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, now another church is starting, being planted in Botswana. And we, we have think that God is doing around the world. And uh, we, we have um, the, led by God to come and uh, establish ourselves, uh, led by God to be in Pennsylvania, Central PA. And what, what, what work of God. It's just God who can do things like this. So in, I was saying three years ago, I was thinking, uh, can I come and use this place to broadcast and do what I would like to do? Because some of the things I do, I just do it from my place or different places using the internet, reaching the world. Amen. So, when I, I unfortunately, I've never shared that with Brother Mike. And uh, when I heard, and he called me, he talked to the phone, I said, this is it. This is it. This is reaching the world from this place. What what a privilege to be in Gettysburg. Amen. So I'm really very excited. I want to let you know that you uh, heard from God. And thank you for uh, counting out to be part of this. What an excitement to be part of what God is doing in the world. This is the Revival Now Network. So I read all the details. Wonderful. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. So, uh, I went through the, the program that uh, God talked to you about, and you said this first time, and I, I'm amazed to see that among the, I'm among the very first to start. <laughs> so, uh, the, the topic of Jesus, that was really something that went to me and said, wow, that's the best thing, that the best team that somebody has to start with. Actually, what I'm going to teach today is Jesus is the only true gospel message. Jesus is the only true 
gospel message. If we want to preach the gospel, we have to preach Jesus. If we want to receive the gospel, we have to receive Jesus. If we want to proclaim the gospel, we have to proclaim the gospel that is the life of Jesus. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given to me to hear from you and receive. I'm asking by all the power of the Holy Ghost to give me the way to express what you have put in my heart this afternoon. I pray also for my brothers and sisters here now and those listening live and will be listening in the days to come through this broadcast that you give each one of us the heart and the spirit of understanding of receiving and faith to see those things that are not yet as if they are and to receive from you the power that is in the gospel. Thank you, Lord. By the Holy Ghost, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you are like me, you know, I'm from Africa. We shout, we clap, and do dance. Hallelujah. Amen. Make a shout for Jesus. You can do it. You can do it better. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, 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 as you, some of you know, I'm coming from a country where we speak French. So I'm trying to speak English. I'm trying to express myself. Uh, and sometimes I have uh, many words that come. I speak English. I speak French. I speak many other African languages. So sometimes it's a, like a kind of explosion in my, <laughs> in my head. So, um, but what I like is to read the scripture in the way people will really understand. I have two or uh, three passages of the scripture that I want us to read as the beginning of our three, uh, message. So, if somebody has a good translation and he reads very well, please help me reading this. And we will hand you the microphone because I want to make sure that the, 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 the audio is very good. So, we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 11. And the second scripture will be Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. And the third one will be 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. So let me come back again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 to 11. Who is going to read that? Yes, brother. What is your name again? Brian. Thank you. And the second person who is going to read Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Who is going to read that? In a good translation. I, I know that some of you, you like King James Version, but I don't understand it very well. You understand that I'm trying to learn English. Anyway. Okay, thank you. And the third person will read just one verse in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So, we start with Brother Brian. Yes, go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Then he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain in the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then all, by all the apostles. Then last of all he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due season. For I was the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and by his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Amen. Thank you, brother. And next scripture is Philippians chapter 2, 
verse 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, also, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you. And the third person is going to read first Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Who is reading that? Please help me. Yes, my sister there. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for going around with the mic. Okay. Thank you. And great and important and weighty, we confess, is the hidden truth, the mystic secret of the godliness. He, God, was made visible in human flesh, justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit, was seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. What a scripture. What a topic to preach about Jesus. Paul, in the first uh, scripture we read, is saying he's trying to repeat to the people of, of Corinth the gospel he preached to them and he taught them before. And there are words that are very important, he says in this chapter. He's trying to say that the gospel should be preached taught, received, announced, believed. There are words like that. And he said, the gospel should be kept. It should be repeated. It should be seen. It should be accepted. It should be believed in the way, the way he preached to them. So Paul, when he's saying this, he, he, he knew that he, how important it is that we keep the gospel and we hear them over and over and over. And also he said the danger of going astray or going very far to something different. You know, the temptation we have all over the world, it used to be in those days, but now it's even bigger and bigger, is to try to find something new. You want to hear a, 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 a something that is strange, that has never happened before, we have never heard that before. And that temptation can come even to Christianity to the point of feeling that Christianity or the gospel that we have heard is a deja vu, so we don't need that anymore. So people are looking for some new mysteries, some new experience and some new thoughts, some new teachings. And Paul said, no, no, I'm trying to tell you, I want to repeat to you the gospel that is the good news that I gave you before is the same thing and you have to keep it in the way you had it, you received it. Unless, if you go and train from around that, you will believe in vain. Are you getting what I'm... I think that in, in, in those days in Corinth, like all the Greek, everybody wanted to, knew, to, to know and say something new. And today it's almost the same. Everybody wants to hear something new Something, something that is relevant to the, the, our time, our culture, and things like that. And the danger we can have as believers is to water the message of the gospel and try to make it something that will look new. And, of course, it will become something completely different from what God intended us to hear and preach and proclaim. I, I, are you getting what I'm trying to say? And sometimes people complain, why we don't have the same result? We are seeing, it seems that people are not being converted. We are not seeing the revival as you used to hear about. The problem is the message of the gospel has been changed, has been altered, has been presented in a way that is not the original message. That's why we're not getting the original, the genuine result. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So, 
That, that is what Paul is trying to tell us in this scripture. He said, what I taught you, and he went, he went through the details, what is that the gospel? Actually, he's trying to say the gospel is the life of Jesus. That person who came in this world and show us the ways of God, the plans of God, and save us through his death and rose again. He's alive. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Come with me and say amen when I say amen. Hallelujah. So, Paul is trying to tell them that this is the gospel and this is the way it should be received and kept and we have to keep on believing that and we get the result of the Bible. Paul is saying the same thing when we come to the, what he said in first in, in the book of uh, Corinthians, uh, Philippians. He's trying to explain to us what is Jesus. From past in the eternity, he was God with the Father. But he humbly decided, accepted to become like us, a human being. And the Bible says he gave himself because he wanted to become a human being to save human beings. And the Bible says that he suffered death. First, he suffered as a servant, and then death. And not any kind of death, the, the worst, the most uh, uh, shameful way of dying at the cross. And then from there, he rose again. He came back to life because the Spirit of God rose him from the dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. And the, he said, then, then, the Father has given him the name that is above all other names, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. So that's what Paul is trying to explain to us. Who is Jesus? And in, the, uh, in his letter to Timothy, he explained that he said, that mystery of God becoming and taking the human flesh have lived among us. That mystery that is without controversy. I like that. It is without controversy. It's certain. It's sure. He lived here. He was an historical figure. Actually, when we said B.C. and after Christ, it means he lived in this world as Plato, as Caesar, as Napoleon, as Abraham Lincoln, all those people who live in this land, but none of them has marked the history to, to the point they said before and after. So G, Paul is trying to say he came in this world and he has been seen by angels and preached to the nations, believed in the whole world, and now transported and translated into the glory. Hallelujah! Praise Jesus! This is the gospel, the life of Jesus. Every time I, I think of how to preach and what to preach, uh, the first and the easiest thing that comes to me, preach about Jesus. That's why I like to think it. It's, it's simple, it's clear, and Especially, it brings results. Let me tell you, it brings results. The apostle and the disciple of Jesus, they went ahead, when Jesus sent them, they didn't go and tell them some theological theolo philosophy. They didn't go and tell them a lot of things about psychology and uh, science. They just told the people about Jesus. Jesus said, go and preach the kingdom of God. And they preached, they had the result. What were the results? Go, preach the kingdom of God. The, 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 the sinners shall be saved. And that's why he came here for. He said, then they, they, they heal the sick. Those who are blind will see. The lamb will walk. The cripple will jump up and walk. Hallelujah. And they, he said, cleanse the leopard. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. And when they went, they saw that they came back and said, Lord, we just said a thing is in your name, and it works. Hallelujah. It works. Stay with me. It works. It works. Hallelujah. 
So the disciple came with that report and said, Jesus, what you told us to go and say, we just told them about you, and it works. That is the same thing that Jesus is expecting each one of us to do and go about. Preaching, believing, and proclaiming, receiving, and repeating the gospel, the life of Jesus. Why that life is so important to us to know? Because God has decided to make himself known to human beings through Jesus. From the whole testament, actually, since the time the human being died, uh, fell in sin, the Bible said God promised that he would sin, send a redeemer, the, the, the seed of the woman, that will come and redeem the human, uh, uh, human race. So that's how the, 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 the prophecies of Jesus is the first part of the gospel. The, those prophecies and types and images and people don't, uh, and uh, ceremonies that were being done in the Old Testament or that God gave the children of Israel to keep and try to understand that the Messiah will be coming. So if you want to preach the gospel, we have to know that the life of Jesus was already prophesied. It was pro predict predicted. It was illustrated. There were types in the Old Testament. There are prophecies that are very clear about where he will be born, what shall he do, what, uh, what kind of person he will be, what will be his message, and what will be his work, and his death, and his resurrection. All those prophecies given in the Old Testament were pre be preparing the human being to, uh, to understand the, and to give the, the portrait, the profile of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's good that the people to know that Jesus just didn't show up. God prepared things. I always tell, tell people the Old Testament is like a big website where Jesus, God he was publicizing. He was making the announcement who is, and giving the details how the Messiah will look like and what we will do. It was like a signboard. That's all the book of the Old Testament. Signboard showing direction. This way, if you go Ruth uh, uh, Terry, you go to, uh, to, to Jesus the life, uh, Jesus is Lord ministry. It shows you the signboard. It was sign. Those things were showing who is the one to come. And the, the expectation of the Jews for centuries, for years, even when they went into captivity, they were believing that the king of the Jew will come. The, the son of David. That person will come and set us free. He is the Redeemer, the Messiah. And that's what they hoped for. That's what they believed they were expecting to see. Because God prepared them. So that's why when the Bible said that the gospel was even preached to Abraham, it means Jesus was already preached, presented to Abraham. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So that's why we have the, all, all the prophecies of the outer testament that is giving the profile so that the people of God, the Jews who had the holy, the holy scriptures of the Old Testament could have an idea who is the Messiah. Of course, not everybody believed. Some of them believed and some didn't believe. One of those who didn't believe first was Paul. And then he changed because Jesus showed himself mightily and powerfully. And, powerfully, and then he saw in the scripture, he understood he's the one. But like people like Peter, John, and Luke, Matthew, all of those who are Jews, they believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the one who was sent. Even Nicodemus believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, praise God for the Jews that believed already that Jesus is the Messiah. I still say to the Jews today, you have to believe. If you read the Old Testament, you have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. You don't have to go another way. Abraham believed in the Messiah. David believed in the Messiah. Hallelujah. You have no other way than to receive Jesus as the Messiah. Hallelujah. So the, old, the prophecy of the Old Testament is the first step of the preaching of the gospel. Then the, another thing that we need to know about the preaching of the gospel, talking about the life of Jesus, is his birth. 
he was born out of the virgin. When you read the, 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 the gospel of Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2, you see how he was just a, 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 a series of miracles. When the power of the Holy Ghost breathed into Mary and she conceived and had a son and that son was the son of God. So if we want to, live the, to believe the gospel, we have to start by believing that Jesus was birthed and from a virgin. So that's very important. You know, today some of the things that are being taught and even in, in, in unfortunately in some colleges and uh, Bible seminaries, they try to feel like, okay, he was born, but you know, uh, we, we don't know how it happened. Maybe it was a kind of development that came. No, no, he was birthed miraculously from a virgin. Hallelujah. And that is the first part of the good news that we have to believe. When we believe that, then we will be able to understand that any other miracle can happen. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? When you don't believe that, then you doubt most of the part of the thing that Jesus will be and can be doing today. Let's believe that there were a lady who didn't have any contact with the man and from there came a, a, the, the son of God, Jesus. If we believe that sometime when we look ourselves that we don't have people, we don't have a help, but Jesus did that, came to somebody who didn't have any help. Hallelujah. So, believing the virgin birth of Jesus is very important if we want to receive the good news. And actually, when he was born, the Bible says that even the angel was amazed. They worshiped God. They said, glory to God in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They were amazed. Angel came and worshiped him. They praised him. That's why Christmas is so important. It should be the reason of the Christmas will be the, the birth of Jesus. And not just somebody was born, Ben talk, talk about birthday, but because he was born out of a virgin. That is the power that is in the, in the Christmas. Uh, are you getting what I'm trying to say? Because now we turn to Christmas to something that is just a ceremony, it's a family uh, a reunion, a town to, to, to celebrate, to enjoy and get friends to come. That's not the reason why we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas because God himself came to this earth through Jesus, uh, in, the name of, in, in the life of Jesus through a vision. That's a miracle in it itself. And even people worshipped him when he was still a baby. That's, that's, a, that's a miracle. That's big. Somebody, they don't know and they worship him as Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's why we have to celebrate that Jesus came to this earth to show the goodness of God. Another thing that is important to know about the gospel, when Paul is trying to talk about the life of Jesus, but the gospel itself, I'm talking about John, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, trying to explain to us who is Jesus and who is that person. First, he lived a life without sin. That's wonderful. Human beings, I tell you, every one of us has no, a lot of downturns and weaknesses. We know that we, that we cannot go about trying to obey the command of God. So, Jesus lived in this life he went through every kind of temptation, but the Bible said he committed no sin. He didn't sin. So that's a miracle. That's a good news. That tells us he was a different kind of person. And he can save anybody who is having problems. Because he can give you the power that kept him without sin. Uh, hallelujah. Believing that, that Jesus really, 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 really lived in this life and didn't commit any sin, that's very important for us to know because it's good news. Where everybody failed, Jesus didn't fail. Hallelujah. When everybody was not able, Jesus showed that it is possible to live in this life, to go through all temptation without sin. But what is amazing about Jesus being without sin, he was also full of grace and compassion. 
You know, sometimes when people are innocent, when people don't do bad things, they pretend, they look at the other people, where they look down on them. These are sinners, these are things. But Jesus was not that kind. He didn't sin, he didn't commit any sin, but he was graceful. He was ready to come, come closer to the prostitute, to those who were who uh, put aside by the society because of their weaknesses, because of their kind of right, life they were living. He came close to them. He was full of grace, without sin, but full of grace. Without sin, but full of grace. That's a miracle in itself. Hallelujah. It is not easy for somebody to know I am righteous, I am just, I have no sin, and to embrace those people who are really deep down in sin. He became the friends of sinners. One of the things they accused him, they didn't accuse him that he was a sinner, they said he is a friend of sinners. Are you getting the picture? So that shows the gospel, a righteous, just person, friend to those people who are living in sin, who are weak, and he lifted them up. He actually impacted the virtue of holiness that was in him onto them. He shared their weaknesses, but he made them to become strong like him. Hallelujah. He, he, when they were the people who were abandoned because of their sin, he embraced them. He brought them back to them, to, to God. So that's that's good news. That's good news. Lived allowed. We allowed a life without sin, but he was full of grace and compassion. He forgave people who were sinful because toward God and even who were doing a lot of bad things to your other human beings, even to himself. So that's 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 very important. Then another part of the life of Jesus that the gospel is trying to explain to us, he lived a powerful life, a life full of miraculous wonders and signs that were showing that he came to show the kingdom of God. When he saw those who were lame, he said, this is that doesn't look like the first plan of God about human beings. Rise up and walk. And the people walk. He looked at those people who were le lepers. He looked at them and said, no, 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 you can't be clean. Go. And they were clean. He, he went about going place to place, healing the sick, casting out devils, setting the captive free. He went about doing good to human beings, those who were broken by problems or all kinds. So that's a good news. That's Jesus. That's the Jesus I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus showed that he came here to help human beings to come out of their brokenness, their life that was completely destroyed by the devil. They actually were casting a devil because he showed that he came to destroy the work of the devil. Hallelujah. So he stopped things. He even control elements like tornadoes, like the hurricanes, and things. He walked on water. That's the life of the Jesus we're talking about. This is the good news. I want to tell people, when you see somebody who is sick, and you tell them, okay, you take it easy, that's not good news. The good news tells them, in the name of Jesus, I can heal you. Jesus has sent me to show you the compassion of God. You're going to, you, you, you're going to be healed. That's the good news. That, I'm talking about the good news that Jesus is alive and he does the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few days ago, actually, uh, last week, I, I, I was invited to go and preach in Scranton, Scranton, Pennsylvania. And uh, I preached the gospel as I always preach with fire, preaching Jesus, that he sent me with the power to cast out devil, heal the sick, proclaim the captive free. Hallelujah. I told the people, today, that Jesus I'm preaching through me is going to heal you. If you are desperate, you need help from God, you need God to touch you, come here, he's going to heal you. People were coming, I saw a lady who came with a wheelchair, I said, today you're going to leave that place. Oh, they were looking at me, wow, what is this guy saying? I said, no, I'm, I, uh, let me explain to you. I know sometimes when I talk, people look at them, we don't understand this English. I said, it's, Jesus is going to heal you today, and you're not going back to that wheelchair. And the people were looking at me, wow, what is going to happen? When she came, I took her home. I said, okay, come. And she sued. 
Can you imagine how the crowd became wild? Woo! Wow! Woo! Some of you can see that on, on, online. It's on in the internet. It, it was live. I'm talking last week. It's not just in, in Jerusalem. I'm not talking about the first century. I'm talking last week. Hallelujah. And a man, a, a man came there with his son and his daughter. He said, oh, my daughter cannot hear. She doesn't speak. She was like around maybe seven or nine years old. My wife was there. I don't know. And, and I asked, what is the name of the, your girl, your daughter? She, she said, my daughter's name is Paris. I said, oh, oh that is the, that's where I'm coming from. Paris, we speak French. I said, okay, but we're going to speak to, 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 speak to her in, in French. They looked at me right. I said, okay. I said, do you going to see? Jesus is going to heal her. I called Paris, Paris. No, nothing was shouting. Paris, Paris, nothing. I said, okay, come, 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 come close. Paris. I, I, I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of dumb and deaf spirit, leave her. Go, come back no more. I called Paris. Yes. I said, Jesus, Jesus. I said, okay, now we're going to French. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Merci beaucoup. She said, merci beaucoup. The whole crowd went wild. Hallelujah. I'm talking about last, last week. Jesus can do that again. That is the good news of Jesus. He heals the sick. He set the captive free. He made the lame walk. He is my Jesus. That the Jesus I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Praise God. There were outstanding miracles there. A man came there with his, uh, I don't know how do you call it, a walker. I looked at him. I said, you look too beautiful to just be going like that and being pushed by his wife. I said, give me that walker. Hallelujah. I took the walker. I said, dance with me. Oh my, you should see the video. That man started dancing like an African. Hello, God. Hallelujah. God is good. Jesus did that. I'm talking about last week. I'm talking about last week, Tuesday. Uh, what is the date? Tuesday last week was the 12th. Praise God. He is wonderful. Another man has a stroke. He couldn't speak well. He came with his work out, pushing it. I said, give me that. I don't want you to use that anymore. Woo! They looked at me and said, this man is crazy. I said, yes, for Jesus. I like that. I like the challenges. My Jesus is real. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about them, but I'm talking for you to have faith. You also can just rise up and walk. I told the person, move. He was not a, I removed his uh, thing he was using. He was just shaking. I said, move. He was shaking. He said, move. I said, in the name of Jesus, move. Follow me. And he started walking. Oh, hallelujah. That was great. I like that. I like my Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is real. He's true. The gospel should be preached. When we talk about Jesus doing signs and wonders, it's not just because of what he did then, but because of what he can do today. Today again. He can use each one of us. And actually now he's using me for you to have faith so that you can rise from where you are and start walking in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Jesus not only did signs and wonders, he taught the best message ever to proclaim the kingdom of God. Showed the people how to live and how to talk, how to say things, how to, to, to please God. He taught words that brought faith into human beings. Actually, he, didn't, he was not just a kind of teacher who was trying to make people believe thing, strange things, but he was telling them how to live the life that would be pleasing to God. And he taught a wonderful, marvelous message that has changed the whole world. Everywhere people have received that message, new hope and birth. People have changed their life, their way of living. The message of Jesus is a, more than a revolution. It's something that changed the human being who received that message from the inside out. 
if we receive the message of Jesus as it is taught in the four gospels, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we will see the result of those life transforming, life, life of nation of people have been changed because the message of the gospel. And it's not a very complicated message. It's simple. Sometimes we make it very hard. But the people come to the church and they come, they hear, they don't understand what, what you're trying to say. I make it easy. Jesus taught that message, and that message works again today. And God wants us to receive that message. He wants you to receive the message of Jesus. If you accept that, you will see the change that will come in your life. Because those are words full of grace. They are words full of power and wisdom. They show, they, those words show the way to live according to God. Hallelujah. That's the gospel of Jesus. And that's what he sent us to go and proclaim. He said, go and preach the word. The word that Jesus preached and sent us to preach is a seed that can bear fruits everywhere we sow that seed. I've been preaching not only in America. Of course, I started in Africa in this town, in the jungle, in the villages, the gospel of Jesus brings the same result. The lamb walk, the dead are raised, the, 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 the dumb the, and the, 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 the dumb hear and speak. That message of Jesus gives the same result in every continent. I preach this in Europe, it works. I preach this in America, it works. I preach this in every continent, it works. The message of Jesus has the power to change lives. We have seen sinners, crooks, prostitutes, because they received the message of Jesus, they have changed their life. They become new, new Christian, new born again. They become actually the sons of God. That is the power that is in the message of Jesus. That change people who are weak to become bold. They change the people who are, who are sinners to become saints. The message of Jesus, that is the gospel I'm preaching. I'm trying to tell you. We have to believe that. And that message brings revival. Listen, revival is not just because we're going to exercise ourselves and do some true beat and strange things. You have to Preach the message of the gospel. Simple gospel message brings revival. Listen to me. Simple gospel message brings revival. I'm not talking about kind of gimmicks. I'm not talking about ceremonies. I'm not talking about muzuzas and all the things that people put and try to make people. No, I'm talking about the simple gospel message brings the revival. I'm talking about the simple gospel of the, the, the message of the gospel brings the revival that we need. If we're trying to look for something strange, I want to give them mysteries. God is not in it. God is not, he doesn't work with mysteries. He already made mystery known. The gospel was for many years mystery and he, he revealed that. I, I heard some preachers say, I'm going to talk mysteries. I said, okay. And then, why? We don't need that anymore. Jesus revealed everything. Even the church used to be a mystery. Now the church is not mystery. The church is revealed fact. It's there. The message of the gospel tells the, you, the, the sinner, you are a sinner because you have the, the seed of Adam, Adam and because you sin. But if you receive Jesus, Jesus will forgive you and you will transform, you become a son of God. It's as simple as this. The gospel, of, the message of the gospel that brings revival, let me let you know. It's just the message that tells the people, receive Jesus as Lord, Lord and Savior in your life. You will change your life, and people change. It changed lives, hallelujah. The simple gospel message. I've learned theology, I have Bible school, I teach in Bible school, I go to many seminars, but I can tell you philosophy, psychology, all kind of teaching that you can receive never change a human being. The simple gospel of Jesus, the simple message that Jesus preached is the only power that God uses to save human beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what we have to preach. If we want to see the revival, I've seen that before. I was born again into a revival. God used me for a 
a revival that was spread seven years of signs and wonders of being people being healed thousands of young boys and young girls some of my friends changed the whole area changed with a simple gospel message we not no with, without any certificate for a bible school without any certificate from university without i'm not against that i went to the bible school later on i went i have a degree at the university i'm a doctor i like that but i want to let you know the simple gospel message change people's life that's what we are about you don't have to wait until you go to a bible school with, before you start to preach the gospel actually all the revival in history has been birthed because people preach the simple gospel message of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what we need. And we need that revival now. And if we, if we need it now, we have to preach the gospel now. Hallelujah. And over and over and over, the gospel, the message of Jesus, the life of the one who came on this earth to be the savior of the world. Don't them. Jesus, that the Paul was saying, the life of Jesus, the, the gospel is his death. He died on the cross, not because he wanted to please human beings, not because he refused to please human beings. Because, you know, some people die as martyrs because they want to please people. Or because they don't, they, they just want to disobey and then they kill them. No, Jesus didn't die because of that. Of course, the Jews were very angry because of what he was trying to tell them. He was trying to correct things that were wrong. And they complotted with the, the, the authorities and killed him. But that was not it. The Bible says it was a mystery that the devil didn't know that they killed Jesus for our redemption. It was an atoning death that all the type of the Old Testament were trying to explain that Jesus is the Lamb of God who shall remove the sins of men and the lamb has to die that's why jesus died on the cross it's good that we preach that gospel not just to cre create emotion in people you see he died his blood was crying you know they kill him it's just that's just for movie and that doesn't bring the new birth the new birth if we have to explain that when jesus died he was atoning the human being that is the only way we human being could be redeemed. Because human being was against God, they weren't afraid, and God had to redeem them. So the only way Jesus paid with his blood and his life. This is an atoning death. It's not just a, a somebody was killed because he was stubborn, because he, he he wanted to please other people to look at, oh, he's, he's so good, he, he's beautiful, he's full of compassion. No, he died an atoning death. And if we believe that, then we will understand that he took our place. We were condemned. We were supposed to be to, to die. Actually, we were spiritually dead. And Jesus took our place. The Bible tells us that he took our place. He was our substitute. So he died on our behalf. So that we can be accepted back to God and he bought us through, through, through his blood and the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I wanted somebody to clap Jesus. He died for us. So the death of Jesus shouldn't bring us sorrow. I've seen people when they look at the cross of Jesus, they carry a skull, they start crying. I never cry. When I see Jesus die on the cross, I'm a happy. Wow. Poor devil, he doesn't know what he's doing. That is where uh, we, where God put him a uh, uh, redemption. So, the death of Christ is not a bad news. It is a good news. Uh, are you talking? Um, uh, uh, are you listening to what I'm trying to say? Every day you talk about the death of Jesus, be happy. Proclaim it with joy. Said he died. I'm happy he died. Oh, hallelujah. I know it's a little, it looks a, a little bit strange. When I, but the death of Jesus is not something that we should bring us sorrow. The death of Jesus is the good news. It's good news. I'm talking good news. I'm talking about the death of Jesus is good news. Hallelujah. The death of Jesus is good news. Until we explain that, 
we preach that that way, people will not look at it as a, as a redeeming and an atoning death. They will pity Jesus. They will feel for him. Jesus didn't ask her to feel for him. He actually told the lady who was trying to cry for him, in the, cry for yourself. This is, I'm not, nobody's taking my life. I'm giving my own life. So he himself was, knew what was going on. So we should be happy that Jesus died on the cross. We should be happy. We should explain that and proclaim it. Paul, Paul said, I'm proud. I'm happy because of the cross of Jesus. Because at the cross, I died and the world died for me. That is the sign of joy. That's what brings my salvation. I'm saved because Jesus died. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's good news. It's not a bad news. It's not a bad news. I'm trying to go. The next step is Jesus when he died, that was not the end of all. He rose again. He came back to life. His resurrection, what a glorious message. The Bible said he has victory over death. He came back to life three days exactly as he said. The Son of God will suffer, will be rejected, he will be killed, he will die. And on the third day, he will come back to life. That is the good news. What a news. I like that. If I was a woman, I would like to preach every day about the resurrection of Jesus. Because that is the message that Jesus gave to the ladies. Go and tell. Hallelujah. Go and tell. He is not, don't look for the living among the dead. Go and tell. If a man come and preach to you, you ladies, you have to uh, keep quiet. You don't have to preach to them. Okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus. That's what he told me. Go and tell. If you say that, there is power in it. If you say that Jesus conquered death, he's alive. Hallelujah. He's alive. Paul said he showed himself even to Cephas, to other disciples, and even to me. Jesus is alive. And that is a glorious message. Thank the world that Jesus didn't just die and that is over. He came back to life. He's alive today. That the power that the church was proclaiming every day. That's why the church in the book of Acts were triumphant. Because they were proclaiming a living Savior. Not because he never died. A living Savior means he died and came back to life. He has conquered death. He is alive. That message you should preach everywhere you go. Tell, don't just stop at the cross. But he came back. He came out of the tomb. He is alive. Go and tell people. If we want to have a revival, let's proclaim the resurrection power of Jesus. Jesus is alive. He is real. That is the real deal. When we preach that, we have the result and that makes the dead people come back to life. I'm talking about physical deaf people. I've seen three in my ministry. They brought the dead. One day I was preaching the gospel in an open air meeting. The people came there and the, the, my team came. One of them team said, what you have seen, now they have brought the dead man. He's there at the corner. He said, great, glory be to God. Today we're going to see what Jesus is doing. I preached my message as is. Everybody was there, was living. Even the dead, I was preaching to the dead. I said, Jesus is alive. He's going to heal the sick. He's going to make the lamb work. He's going to set the captive free. He's going to raise from the, the people from the dead. He sent me to proclaim that it's going to happen today. While I was preaching and somebody got healed, hallelujah. I said, come and give your testimony. The lady would think, uh, I couldn't speak. And this is a small village. Everybody knew each one. And I said, look at her. Oh, yes, we know. She never spoken. I started talking to her in, in my mother tongue. I like things like that. Like what I did in Scranton. That girl, I make her speak French. She's an American. She never went to somewhere where did French, but because she was, that was the first time she was hearing and speaking. I said, "Let me teach her something different." She said, "Bonsoir, bonsoir, merci beaucoup." Man. She said that I was exciting. I was heavy. Hallelujah. The same thing at that lady, at that meeting. I was trying to tell her, "See, Jesus is good. Jesus is wonderful." 
and she started saying that the people were excited to hear that that lady speaking my mother tongue because in Congo we have 450 uh, languages so that everybody knows all the languages so I was teaching and this is a different part of the of the country so I, I was exciting to preach somebody the language she doesn't know but this is the first time you speaking hallelujah so she spoke my mother tongue I was happy while the people were made to see her speak we saw the crowd there people running what is happening there the dead man is by it's out on his head face feet walking wow hallelujah jesus say with me jesus jesus hallelujah with in the name of jesus we can see those things blind men blind eyes open we can see the dead come back to life because he died and came back to life. This is real. I'm not talking about stories and myth mythology. I'm talking about the fact that happened. When we preach this message, it works. It works. Jesus came back to die to, 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 from death. And the Bible says he gave us the victory over death. So we can have the hope of knowing that the, we, at the end of all, will come back to life. When the Bible said, when the trumpet will sound, the death in Christ shall rise again. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead. And this is the good news. This is the message. And that Jesus who rose again from the dead. The Bible says, four days, 40 days after, he was ascended to heaven. That's a good news. He told the disciples, you don't, shouldn't be sad because I'm going. If I go, I will send you the Holy Ghost. I like the ascension of Jesus. When he, he ascended, he seated on the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says that from there he reigns. He is the Lord who reigns again today. In the Lord of the life of those who give their life to Jesus today. So that's a good news. Or saying Jesus didn't just vanish from Jerusalem. No, he is reigning is sitting at the is seated today at the right hand of God at the throne. He controls life. He's in charge. I like that. He's in charge. He's there controlling everything that we need for our lives. So when we receive him in our lives, the Bible says, then he becomes the Lord of our life. Because he's alive, he's real, he's true, he can come in our life. If today, as you listen to this message, you call that Jesus, Jesus, I want you in my heart. I want you in my life. He will come in our life. Because he is seated at the right hand of God to serve human beings. The last thing I would like you to say about the gospel of Jesus, he is coming back to reign forever. He is coming back. We proclaim his return, not to make people to become careful, not to make people look like oh they they are the, the how do you call it the left behind but to let them know the king of king is coming you should come into the boat you should come and go with him in glory we we waiting that god that jesus coming back again because he's lord and the bible said then every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I'm about to finish then. If we know that he's coming and proclaim he's coming, that is a good news. Human beings need to hear that there is a king of kings who is coming to reign. He wants to become their Lord and their Savior. And the human beings who will hear that, they will receive him as their Lord. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That's the good news. Jesus is coming. He's the Lord. He has control of everything. He's our Savior. If we receive him, and if you receive him now, he will give you that eternal life. You will never regret that you made that decision to receive him. He is the Savior who did signs and wonders, who died on the cross, but he's the Lord who wants to take control of your life to help you succeed in life. And that Jesus he is coming and he's coming back soon. I'm preaching this gospel because I want him back as soon as possible. Why, how that will happen? 
when we preach this message of the kingdom, he said, them and them, them, the end will come. That's why you are listening to this message. You are receiving this because this is the way me and many other ministers are calling Jesus back to heaven. If you receive him, you have the eternal life. You shall enjoy him and you will be happy to know the Lord I'm preaching. I'm talking about Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to this crowd and to the people online, to people on the TV, that you touch my life and change me and touch the life of millions and change them because you are the Son of God and the Savior of the world, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I pray tonight, O oh Lord, that you touch the life of those who are listening today. Let them believe and receive you. You said you knocking at the door. If they open, you will come in their life and dwell with them. Have supper with them. Rejoice with them and save them. I pray tonight, Lord, you set to, for you send me to preach the gospel, heal the sick, set the captive free, uh, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. I pray, Lord, that that your power touch them through these words. I'm saying so that they will know that the gospel works. Heal the sick, save the lost, Lord Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, let the dead come back to life in the name of Jesus. I cast out devils, every demonic power that has been in the lives of those listening on the place where they are. I cast them out. Go and come back no more in the name of Jesus. I proclaim you free, healed, saved in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Thank Praise you, the Lord. Mike. Well, you're not done yet, brother. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. The Bible says that three times in the New Testament, it says that when they laid their hands on the sick, they were healed. They said when they laid their hands on those who needed the Holy Ghost, they got the Holy Ghost. And it says, and uh, Paul said, uh, Timothy stir up the gift which is in thee with the laying of the hands of the presbytery. So uh, we'd like you to encourage you to come up and have hands laid on you right now. Everyone, just come up and have hands laid on you. Come on. Come on. There's a transference. There's an impartation. There's a partaking by the laying on of hands. It's biblical. It's scriptural. It's New Testament. It's the book of Acts. It's Jesus. I don't understand it. Lay hands. Lay hands. You get healed, you get delivered, you get set free. There's a green line of life. You stand on the green line of life. Right here is duct tape. So stand on the green line of life and have hands laid on you. God's going to do something in you. Say, God's going to do something in me. Mentally, physically, emotionally, even financially. Remember that the prophets of old used to lay hands on their children and they would bless them. Abraham laid hands. Uh, Jacob laid hands. We're just going to lay hands in the name of Jesus. And just begin to receive. Just close your eyes and just have an air of expectancy. Whatever it is that God has for you right now, say, God has something for me. Right now, in this place. And we're not going to run past you and just touch you. I just, I don't like that. I like to lay hands. If you begin to go forward, if you begin to go backwards, if you, if you begin to fall backwards and there's people behind you, but if they're not, we're just going to pull you forwards. And we're just going to lay hands in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we lay hands, we thank you for an impartation of healing, deliverance, freedom, joy, peace, love, life, victory, impartation, Lord, in the name. And, Lord, let them be like a bunch of sponges. Say, I am a spiritual sponge, and I will take whatever God has for me in Jesus' name. Go ahead, Pastor.
Let's give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Pastor, what happens to me when the power of God comes on me and I fall to the ground? I don't know. Something happens. Something good. Something's happening in you. Something's taking place. Tell somebody, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Tell somebody, he's going to get better. At 7 o'clock, it'll be so good I won't know what to do. See, we got another service at 7. And then tomorrow morning at 10, we do have prayer at 6. And we do have the doors open at midnight with music playing. But right now.